Hi, this is Corey again. I thought I'd take you through a little bit more about making pipes. One of the questions that came up from the last couple movies was, how do you deal with making hard corners? So what I've set up here is just two derbs curves that you can see in the outliner. <coughs> and they're degree one curves. So if I show you my curve setting here, degree one. And I'm just going to select first the curve to extrude and then the path. And if you go into the surfaces extrude menu item, you can set up how you want this to happen. The thing I want to point out is by default this tool is set to NURBS, so I'm setting that to polygons. And I like my type set to quads, and my tessellation method I like to set to count. Now count, usually you think of, okay, I don't want more than you know, 500 polys or something. If you set that count to 1, it's going to create the bare minimum to represent the geometry that you've done. So let's do that and see what we get. So you see I get nice long quads across going to each corner. And it looks pretty good. So what you can do, you can play with some of these settings here if you want to change it to, you know, happen you know, from the profile instead of on the path. Um, so play with that if you like. The other uh, thing that I like about this is that you have the construction history to work with. So you see as I rotate my geometry, my profile curve here, I can change the shape of what happened. I can also do changes at the component level. So if I do something like this, you can see we can close in the the gap there. So, uh, something else I want to point out, so that's the extrude node we looked at. There's also the NURBS tessellate that you get from doing this control. So, if you were to go into your tessellation options, actually one on this one, you can see under my advanced tessellation, quads is the output, you also have triangles, my format I can set to different methods. So uh, one of the things I'll do sometimes is go to general and look at my U and V type. So I usually set this to per span. Now, I don't need a lot of detail this way, right? I can just set that down to one. And here, you know, if I'm going to do some deformation or something, I might want to increase that and get more regular shape polys in there. So that's something to consider based on what you're going to do with your uh, geometry afterwards. So, the other thing I'd like to point out is if you're working with some existing geometry, you might just want to decorate it. So, if we had something like this sphere here, you may decide that you want to uh, select an edge and, you know, extrude that around it. So, if you go to the Modify menu, you can convert polygon edges to curves. So we pop that open. Now this being a sphere and, and a circle, that loop there, I've set it to periodic so that it looks like a, a closed curve. So let's convert that and there's that curve. So I'll just hide that sphere for a moment, just for some easier to pick. Pick my profile and the path and extrude. So the first thing you see is uh, it worked but it looks a little funky. So let's just change our settings here. So just turn that around and you can see what I've got. And if I use my control shift H, I can get my geometry back. So you can see the uh, control we get over the shape and you can start decorating things uh, quite well. And you see as I move my profile around, I can control it on the surface. And again, if I were to rotate that around, I can get different effects. Uh, you know, if you do an animation, this can be some interesting things happening that way. So hopefully uh, this gives you a little bit more insight into different ways to make uh, pipes and pipe-like objects.